but is gambling is betting why should it be the elephant in the room it should be right out in front of us we should be talking about it more i think but when you go back to the nfc championship game which prompted all of this right yeah. there was no talk about that game being fixed no talk about any funny but i shouldn't even say it now Ooh, you know uh but i mean isn't it with, with i understand it's all about business it's all about terry bradshaw's money right <laughs> But I, it's a little strange to me that no one's talking about any funny business, especially when you look at the history of the game and how so much of, of this is all subjective. Yeah, and I think the NFL would, would like no one to talk right, about shut it. Shut up. I, yeah, for years, you know, gambling and, and, and handicapping was all verboten and, you know, nobody could talk about it and the NFL wasn't going to discuss it. Obviously, they've warmed up quite a bit. Games in London where gambling's legal. Raiders are headed to Vegas. Well, but the, but the networks, I think, Eric, Yes, I, I think that they have changed the game. When you look at an ESPN, uh, well, just look at, uh, what am I saying? I was going to say them, them having a studio in Caesars, but what about, you know, their daily wager? What about Fox bet? I, I think that now, I don't know. It, it's, it's just troubling to me. Oh, there's no doubt that the, the media focus on handicapping and gambling has changed completely along with it. You have you know, partnerships now, and you have folks devoted their, their careers to this and it's out in front, not kind of buried in the back, so to speak. And, you know, the other element of handicapping too, and the question about whether games are on the level, I don't think anyone in the NFL actually believes, for instance, that the, the Miami dolphins are, are truly, truly tanking. Like we're going to put high school kids out there and, and, and lose games like that. You know, it, it, even, you know, fixed boxing matches have an air of, of question about them, right? So, but just the fact that anybody could bring up the idea that that some of these games are, you know, decided by outside forces scares the heck out of the NFL. They knew yeah. it was people at box going into it, but it's the, it was the, the price you, they paid for knowing they were doing business. You let know? me just tell you, you you're not going to be able to get away with that forever. We're going right. to be talking about this more and more. And, and man, you took the words right out of my mouth because I wanted to ask you about this. And I was talking about this early on the show. We're sitting here and we're ripping into the officials as the big problem right now. Yeah. That's human error, right? But now when you look at the Miami Dolphins, I think when you talk about the integrity of the league, at least it appears the league is trying to make uh, amends for what happened in the NFC championship game with the non-call with all of this kind of overcorrection stuff, right? Yeah. But at least they're trying. But when you look at the Miami Dolphins and what Ross is being allowed to do, I think that is what that really is what strikes at the integrity of the league. Yeah, and I think you have to ask yourself, you know, what are people willing to put up with, right? If you're a Cleveland Browns fan and you've endured you know, decades of losing and, and getting top picks and top five selections and, you know, letting good players walk in for agency, all with this goal of, of, of improving down the road. Look, I know they're 0-1. I know they didn't play well in week one, but you can at least say, look, Baker Mayfield, Miles Garrett, you know, being able to trade picks for Odell Beckham, this sort of thing. It's at least created infrastructure with some elite talent. That is what Miami Dolphins officials will say is their model, right? We are, we are trying to sort of do in maybe a shorter time frame what the Browns took years to do. You know, if you sell it that way, I think there are some fans who are saying, you know what, I understand. Take a step back now for, for a longer term game. But most folks are going to sit there and say, well, well, then why am I paying for season tickets to go to games? You know, why – you know, why am I investing in this team for the hope of something great? Because you still got to make those draft picks. You still have to be able to convince people to play there. You know, that's that's a real hard sell right now. And I think it's, you know, it strikes to what you're talking about, which is a non-competitive team. 